Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about the production possibilities curve in chapter 2, but I think a useful accompanying um, activity will be a more focused one on the New York City budget, because how else do you really show what an economy produces, or how better to show how, what an economy produces than to talk about how government produces its services for residents using limited resources and despite having an unlimited amount of objectives or wants, theoretically. So, in this activity, we're going to do a little bit of pretending. I am going to play the role of a new abolitionist mayor who has come into power in the city um, shortly before the adopted budget, which usually passes in July of every year. Um, because I've come into office before this... Uh, budget passed, I have this unique opportunity to promote, to propose an adopted budget for the city. Um, and I would be proposing this adopted budget to you, the city council members for New York City. So you can take a look at my adopted budget and the prior year's budget in the game um, Excel form, which I'll provide a link to in the description below and also in the email. But from what you can see on the screen here, when you go into the Excel sheet, you will, well, Excel Google spreadsheet sheet actually, you'll see that you can see what our fiscal year 2021 revenue is. And that is the fiscal year for which we will be discussing our um, current budget proposals. But if you're watching this in the future, it might be any fiscal year point is that on the revenue tab you will see the current fiscal year and you'll see all the sources of revenue that the city gets um, its revenue from, its tax revenue from, as well as other miscellaneous kinds of revenue and other city funds. Uh, these numbers will be different for each year, but roughly we get about a good half of the total taxes in the city from property taxes and a substantial portion from personal income tax as well as other taxes like sales tax. Also get a good amount of funding from various levels of government, and we also get some grants from the feds and the states. On the revenue tab, you can see this type of information. You can also go to the last fiscal year's adopted New York City budget tab and see the last fiscal year's adopted budget for the city. And what you can see here is that in column C, we have, first of all, this is fiscal year 2020, so it was the last fiscal year. But for every other row below row three in column C, you can see the millions of dollars that have been allocated to various portions of the New York City budget. And those portions include areas that are allocated to general functions. So, for example, for all of education, we allocated $28.4 billion. But you can see how that breaks down to various agencies that fall under those functions. So of that $28.4 billion, you can see that we allocated $27 billion to the Department of Education and $1.2 billion to CUNY. And you can see this for various other agencies and functions for social services. You can see ACS, Department of Social Services budget. Uh, you can also see links to know more about what that agency does in, if you click through the link. Um, you can see we have culture, we also have it for uniformed services. You can see we have NYPD, FDNY, Department of Correction. We also have this information for health, DOH, MH pops up, as well as Health and Hospitals Corporation, and various other agencies and functions. So you can see what last fiscal year's budget looks like. You can also then see what the budget is that your abolitionist mayor, Mayor Mullings, is proposing here. And you can see how it differs from the 2020 fiscal year budget. So column C still has the budget allocations. Column D has the percentage of the budget that each one of these categories and agencies takes up. But on column E, you can see now the difference between the budget that I am proposing and last fiscal year's budget. So for example, you can see that for my budget in 2021, I'm proposing that we add $1.1 billion to education with about $621 million of that going to DOE and $500 million of that going to CUNY. Even though we are looking at some fiscal austerity in the coming years, 
my budget does have a lot of room for adding in more services, albeit at the cost of some other services. So you can see there are definitely areas of the budget that I have expanded, like social services by 400 million, cultural activities by 576 million, but there are other areas that required some cutting to make sure that we could meet our fiscal goals. For example, uniform services I'm taking $2.8 billion out of, the majority of it coming from the NYPD at a loss of $2.2 billion. I'm also taking out about $1.4 billion from other citywide agencies and elected offices. The mayorality, of course, will have cuts as well, about $18 million. And unfortunately, we see some cuts also for district attorney's offices. But worry not, I am adding into the city council budget. So you're welcome. You can see in column F that we have the percentage change from last year's fiscal budget. So you can see that the additions to education up, come up to about 4% growth for the education budget. Um, for culture, it's looking at around 47% growth. And for the cuts I've made, we see that uniform services I cut by about 26%, and I cut other citywide agencies by about 24%. So this gives you an idea of what my priorities are as the mayor for the city. But what really matters here is what you and your classmates would like for your city to uh, budget. That is why you are all being assigned to various groups. Those groups could be, for example, the New York's um, Teachers Union, could also be the Uniform Services Union under the Blue Lives Matters uh, umbrella, could be the Sierra Club, which is more concerned about environmental protection. Um, regardless of where you're being assigned, the point here is that you, with your smaller group of peers, will determine what you think the budget should be, but with some interesting twists. So, so if we were to look at the New York State Nurses Association's budget, for example, any student who is assigned to this group would be editing the budget on this tab, the New York State Nurses Association tab. And what you would see is that this tab looks very similar to the proposed budget tab from my section, except that you can only edit the white cells in column E. So any white cell in column E is available for the students in this group to edit. And by editing these numbers, you change the amount of the budget with either add or subtract from that area. So let's say, for example, as a New York State Nurses Association, you think that me adding $621 million to the Department of Education is a little bit too high. You can change that to adding no money, or A, B, even just $100 million. And what you'll see is that it will change the percentage of the budget that the DOE makes up, but it will also change the total amount. So rather than the prior 621, which would have made DOE's budget $27.8 billion, if you change that to 100, you can see the DOE's budget now is only $27.3 billion. So by changing the white cells in column E, you can change the amount of money added or subtracted to the budget compared to last year. All the numbers in the column E white cells start off from the default of the numbers I have proposed. Feel free to change any one of them. But there is a number that you should specifically be looking at, or I should say there is a row that you should be particularly concerned about. And that would be any row that is highlighted in gold. In this case, the row highlighted in gold is health, that we're talking about at least. There's another row highlighted in gold I'll get to you in a second, but the role totally highlighted in gold, in this case, is the health one. Health is highlighted because this is the New York State Nurses Association's budget, and any changes to this part of the budget is of particular concern to this lobbying group of nurses, right? Makes sense. Nurses would be concerned about our healthcare spending. Any changes you make to this part of the budget will not only impact the budget, but will also impact another factor that every student needs to be concerned about the amount of extra credit that the students will get in each group. So, column H 
as the extra credit per student in the group. What you'll notice is that as we add money to certain parts of the budget, it actually expands the amount of extra credit available to each student in that group. So, for example, let's say that we wanted to take that 500 million away from DOE and bring DOE's change in budget from last year to just 121 million and add the 500 million instead to DOHMH. What you'll immediately notice is that the budget percentage change increased, but also the amount of extra credit available in the budget area increased as well. It's 1.8 right now. If I reverse the change, you can see it was actually just 1.5. So by adding money into the health portion of the budget, we're increasing the amount of extra credit that students in the healthcare group will get. This applies to every group. Every group has its own priority area, and even in your budget, editing the priority areas for other people will impact the amount of extra credit that they could possibly earn in your budget. So by reducing the DOE budget by 500 million, we've reduced the amount of extra credit provided to the entire group in the education sector. If I was to reverse all the changes, you can see that the extra credit for the whole group went up from 16.6 to 16.8. This matters because although you'll be making your budgets in individual groups, in the end, the entire class will be voting on a single budget for the city to run. So the edits that you make to your part of the budget and to other people's part of the budget will impact the likelihood that they'll vote in favor of your budget. So this isn't just going to be a game of defunding other parts of the budget to give yourself more extra credit. You and your group have to sculpt a budget that is not only a good balance between giving you extra credit, but also a good balance between serving the needs of your peers outside of your group that it will incentivize the other students in the class to vote for that budget. Whichever budget the class ends up voting on together is the budget that the city will run. And the extra credit per person that that budget produces for people in their various groups will be the extra credit that every student will actually get for the assignment. Now you may notice that there's another row that's in gold, and that is the pension contribution section. Any money added to the pension contribution section of the budget will increase the amount of extra credit available in that area, but nobody's actually assigned to the pension group. Instead, any extra credit assigned to the pension contribution section will be evenly split between all of the groups, and therefore evenly split between all of the students. So the more money you add into pensions, the more money that will be split evenly among everybody. But on the flip side, the more money that you take out of the pension section, the less money, or I should say the more money that will be allocated to a specific group rather than evenly and perhaps fairly then distributed among all the students. The final factor to keep in mind is that your budget needs to be balanced. We'll talk more about balanced budgets later on in the class, but for your purposes, a balanced budget in this case is a budget that meets the entirety of the forecasted revenue amount and does not exceed it. So your budget needs to be exactly $88.192 billion. If you even forget to allocate $100 billion or $100 million, let's say we brought down DOE to 521 and we just forgot to add that 100 somewhere, your budget will be out of balance with a surplus of $100. Unfortunately, the city is not allowed to run budget surpluses like that. So another criteria is that you must present as a group a budget that is balanced and spends all of the tax revenue, nothing more, nothing less. So that is basically what this assignment will end up being. Your job as a elected member of the city council is to take the budget proposal that I have provided and to make amendments to it 
so that it not only serves the needs of your constituents, but also serves the wider needs of the city. And by serving those wider needs, makes it a good candidate for being voted upon by your other city council members. Whichever budget gets voted upon is a budget that will follow, and the extra credit distribution within that budget is extra credit distribution that the class will go by. Hope you all have fun with this one, and I hope, above all else, you realize that when we talk about scarcity and the need to manage scarce resources to have an optimal outcome, it's hard to get any more literal than the balancing of a budget for an institution, a government, and thereby the ability to take limited resources and provide an optimal outcome for the people who depend upon that budget.